Hallelujah. Let's just stand and give the Lord a good clap offering. I am not sure why there is this silence and quietness in the presence of our God. And mothers, clap the loudest. This is our day. So why they say it, but I, I am getting a little a lot from the mic when I speak. I'm getting no, it's not a feedback, I just sound very loud to me. So, um, I know that will be dealt with. So, good morning, good morning, yes. Yes, the last time I was speaking to some people, I had to say to them, I'm one of you, because they, they, they look frightened. Frightened because, because it was a number of professionals from the, you know, secondary or primary, and I think they felt this person from the tertiary come in, who is she? So I just had to quiet them and settle their spirits. No, I don't have to do that this morning. I'm speaking to my brothers and my sisters, right? Whether you're in the house or elsewhere. But today is Mother's Day. Let's hear it for the mothers. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, for years I have, uh, this is my personality. I'm not into too much of the, oh, that was good, Sherman. Oh, excellent. Oh, the inside of me feel away. But this morning and over recent times, I'm saying, but you have been, or you have been, you ought to say thank you. So mothers, you ought to feel proud today. You have done well. You have done well. Unfortunately, in Christendom, we focus a lot on where we are not. But today I want to encourage us to focus on where you are. You are. Just now, because the word might show you where you are not. <laughs> so I have to fix you up nicely now. But I, I want to just share with you some of the contemplations of my heart. And I put it that way because I have been speaking to one or two and my cell group, small though it be, powerful together, and I've been sharing with them some of the things that are troubling my, my spirit and troubling me as a mother. Didn't know it was as a mother, just as a human being. But then when this, this request came to see if I would speak, the Holy Spirit, when I, I, I never jump and say yes. I always stop a little. And I stopped and I said to Major Cook, I will let you know. But the minute I said I will let you know and I went into my quiet place, I knew the answer was yes. But I said, let me wait a day. You know, you can't say yes too quick. So I, I waited the day, because, but I knew that the Holy Spirit said, those things that were troubling you is what you're to share about. Because, and while I was doing it, I heard a response from God. 
I have been seeking God because ladies and gentlemen, today is Mother's Day and if you see the title it says, Mothers of Faith, a call to action. And I wouldn't even say I struggled about speaking the word because it's Mother's Day. Because I've come to realize that life goes on, whether it's Mother's Day or not. So life goes on. The things that are assailing us goes on. So we have to deal with it like that. After this, have your lunch, have your dinner. And if you don't look like you're getting any, do it yourself. But we must get something. But for now, let's hear the word of the Lord. So here are some of the things that have been on my mind. We live in a world of darkness. I don't know if you feel it. Pastor Chris would say, we live in a broken world. I think that, 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 that needed to be unpacked for us to understand. But it's darkness. Let me tell you some of the brokenness and the, the darkness. It's a world of unclean lips, of unrestraint. Anything goes. If you need your breast out today, you feel it must be out, it's out. The other parts of your body, if you feel it must be out, it is, must be out. And if you do not, if you are not putting it out, then you are told you don't honor your body. You are not respecting your body. That's the world we are living in. It's a period of non-discretion or indiscretion of sexual perversion at an unprecedented height. Why do I put in unprecedented height? Because you might know of the 70s where they say it was the hippie period and the hippies were explicit and groupology functioned. You know what groupology is? Now they call it, Ruth, you have to tell me the word. It's the same thing, but they now call it polyamorous. You don't know that, what that is? All right, not polygamy, polyamorous. It says, you are free to associate, to love whomever at any time, at the same time. So it is togetherness love. So we are in a group of five, and I love you and you love me, I love him and he love me, I love he, I love she and she love me. I, it's everything going on, it's called polyamorous. Certainly if you ask the young people, they would know it. So that's very, 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 very much like the hippie period. But the hippie never, you know, no relationship, you're just, drink, party, dance, and have sex with anybody right there, while they are there. Same, but unprecedented. It's, it's a defiance against the principles of the word of God and the values of the kingdom of God. So my summary is that secularism is at its height. But the part that broke my heart the most is that it is no longer that persons profess to be atheists and antagonists or agnostics. It is a perversion of Christianity. What does that mean? They are calling the name of Jesus, calling God. I've, I know I'm on YouTube, so I've been quite careful what I say. But this is how it hit me. I watched one interview and it's a young man talking about himself coming out as gay. And he spoke of the brokenness and how he cried night and day because he was rejected by his family. And then he said, at the lowest point, the only person who showed him love was God. And we feel good now. But the principles of God don't matter. 
because he was endorsed to continue in his gay life. For me, we are perverting the word of God. We are perverting the values of God. We are perverting the kingdom of God. And we are confusing. The Bible called them simple-minded, but I'm not stopping at that this morning. They are confusing our children. So they call the name of Jesus, denying the power thereof. You know the Bible talk about that? You call the name of Jesus, but you deny the power thereof. They are parading as believers while deceiving the unaware. It's, it's no longer new age. It is, what is the other thing now? It is, I'm not remembering the name, but it sounds good. And it offers us prosperity. And it offers us success. And when I think about that, I think about Jesus. Remember what Jesus said, when G when, what the devil said to Jesus? Just bow down and worship me, and I will give you all the kingdoms of the earth. And I was talking to someone recently, and the, the thing hit me. And then yesterday, David and I, were, we were listening to an interview, I think it was, and the young lady described it perfectly. She said, she has now built up her influence, because this is how the, the devil works. He has, he has a lot of the singers that our young people follow. And they are not just with the devil, they are sold out. You know the singer says, our man says, sold out. No matter what you, well, these people are sold out, but their influence is great. And with that influence, they now say, I am Q, I am G, I am non-binary. Have you heard those terms? Non-binary. That means I am he, I am she, I am her, I am him, I am his, me one, me one. I am non-binary. Now because I am non-binary, I can be polyagamous. Because today I am male and I love a female. Tomorrow I am a female and I love a male. So it just goes anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, please note that because we sit in church, and might not be very exposed to it, the young people are. They are very, very, very exposed, whether they tell you so or not. And that thing has been breaking my heart because I really felt overwhelmed. I felt like it was a lot coming at us Christians. And I said, God, I do not know how to pray so I went to in, in my room and I said, I don't know how to pray, but I still have to talk to you. So I just wrote down the words, any phrase, any word, and I just leave them before him. And when this call came, he showed me the answer. Why do I say he showed me? Because I preached a similar message one year ago at Faith Family Word, where they invited me to preach. Didn't start like this. But then he showed me the answer remains the same. Our children must navigate this context of darkness and disobedience. Some of us might feel good because our children are 21, 22, 23, 30. Oh gosh, they have passed. Absolutely not. When you look at the people who are being drawn away, because we live in an age that money and power and fame and influence is important. Which other age you see people go after that like in their 30s to 40s? And in that age range, they can be drawn away. Drawn away. Oh gee, I'm doing so well on my job. <laughs> I'm being promoted and promoted and promoted until you come face to face with a decision that you must make. Are you L, are you G, are you B, are you T, are you Q, are you non-binary? 
because that will help you to be promoted a little better. And don't feel it's the US, it's the UK, it's right here in Jamaica. And I have to be judging myself. Recently, I was moderating a regional session and when I'm introducing one of the ladies, I didn't see whether she was Miss or Mrs. So I said, Miss, and then I said, oh, Mrs. And, and then I called the name. Okay, for me, I take the mic and I continue. No, she said, it's neither Miss or Mrs. I don't go by a title. It is Charmaine Barrett. I said, okay. <laughs> So, you know, I say, I don't want to hear nothing from you. Holy Spirit says, Charmaine, you have to cut that. <laughs> Immediately, she locked down. Me no want to hear what you have to say. Holy Spirit said, no, 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 no. And I was also in a situation where I had to listen. Eh? Come here, the moderator. And, um, but when you look at where she is, strategically placed, dealing with the youths in the region, her function is to deal with the youth in the region. Not Jamaica only, region. And that bothered me. I think then I said, God, what is this? What is this? Our children must navigate. And so the question is, how do we help them to stand? And having done all, continue to stand. What does the Lord require of us mothers in Zion? Fathers, you have your role. Before, when we were on the journey to getting married and we're trying to figure out what's the role of the wife and the, fa the, the husband and the mother, one scripture that David, we f found in, in Proverbs, spoke about the, 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 the law of the fathers and the commandments of the mothers. Anybody know that? Look it up, it's in there, in Proverbs, and several times. It therefore means mothers... Who carry out the, who watch over the commandments in the land? The, the legislature makes the law. The policeman who out there every day, they see over it. Well, we, mothers, that's our role. That's our role. So I want to speak to you now. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5 says, You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You and I, male and female, have been called. But I'm speaking to you mothers, mothers of the royal priesthood. And so I'm addressing you today and to focus on your function as priests unto God for our children. What is the function of a priest? A priest is required to act as a mediator. The priest represents God to his people and the people to their God. The priest acts as an ambassador, a chosen vessel, peculiar people through whom God has chosen to serve the people and represent him. The priest is all, also mediates between people and their God. So let's rehearse that, mothers. As priests, the mother priest, we should act as that mediator between God and our children. We represent God. That means we teach God. We show God to our children. And we take our children to God. That's what we are to do. We are to be ambassadors of God to our children. That's what God calls you and I to be. And then we must be mediators. Who is a mediator? 
our, our special mediator is not in the house this morning. But our mediator is the one who goes between the person, the accused and the judge. Some of them we call them lawyer, some we really call mediator. Because you sit with all the parties, the two dividing parties. And the Bible tells us Jesus is our mediator between God and man. Well, mothers, we are mediators between God and our children. Where did we get that concept? Of course, it's all over the scripture. But right now, the Holy Spirit reminds me. It says of Job, when his children, it's not mother, but when his children were out, what were they doing? Partying, they were having fun, and he would pray. He would pray. The principle of being a mediator for your children is biblical. And so God requires that of us. So let's look at mother, or mothers, the priestly function. As Christian mothers, part of our priestly responsibility is to be that mediator between God and our children. To bring our children before God in daily prayer. This is no ordinary function. You and I have to, got to learn, it. no, no, let me say this well. You and I have got to lean into God. And I like that concept. I like when it dropped in my spirit. It's not saying prayers. It do, it's not saying prayers. It's leaning into God on behalf of that wayward child. You know, I have a very, very, very good friend. That friend was my, 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 what you call that best woman, what they call them, <laughs> maid of honor. <laughs> the best woman, my maid of honor. And I remember how we fought and she fought and struggled with her daughter. And years later, she said to me, Charmaine, we do something good. We did something right. Cause the daughter come out good. Because we would pray, we would lean into God. You know, when the thing looked dark, we would lean in, and you know, some of you know how to lean into God. And you, when you lean, you lean, you lean like you're going drop. Drop if you need to drop. He will lift you up, but lean into God. This is no ordinary function. You and I have got to do that. So God is calling us to partner with him in the vision for our children. I remembered Pat Morgan wrote a book. Do you know how far that is? 1994. Time flies. And a phrase, a paragraph from that book says, our children are marked by God for particular purposes. Destinies they were specifically designed to achieve. Unfortunately, as parents and leaders, we have lost our vision for discovering and developing our children's anointing, making the battle for the children's God-given destinies fiercer than ever. This was 1994. Pat Morgan had no clue about 2022. If she thought it was fierce then, can you imagine now? And then one of the things I'm finding out is that these things are not emerging now. They existed long ago. It is the social media that's taking it to you and I. So when we feel so good, oh, my daughter is going to MIT, they are going to University of whatever over US, you better lean in. You better lean. We have to lean. Because children not come out the same time. What do I mean by that? When you're down here and they come to visit you, I'm not accusing any parent. So that I have no, no message, no knowledge in my head. I am, these are the things I'm thinking about. If I should send off my daughter, she come home, God forbid, I'm not using her. Send out Mary Kay. <laughs> I send Mary Kay. Mary Kay come home nice, nice to me every summer. But Mary Kay is not the Mary Kay that I sent. 
Five years down the line, ten years down the line, she come out. What is that saying? Do not go by what you see. Lean. When the Holy Spirit draw we up early in the morning, lean in. Lean in. Don't say, oh gee, look at what's happening to John's child while yours okay. No, 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 no. You just see John child because your child not making them see you. So lean in. So here is how it goes now. Mighty woman of God called forth to show his excellence. I ask you this morning, whatever age your children are, hear my voice and catch the vision. Get caught up with God's vision for your children. And it's not vision that they must be a doctor. It's not vision that they must be a media specialist. It's the vision that they must walk according to the principles of the word of God. You and I must be obsessed. I tell you, when I listen, the people I'm listening to are not 40. They are 26, 27, 28, 30, 32, 35. And they are sold out to the things they believe. Years ago, I listened to an interview and the person, this, this word just jumped out when the person spoke. She, a big woman now, and she said, I remember the days when my mother would jump into bed with us and she would just talk. She said, she was intentional. Let's be intentional. Let's be unapologetic about holding up the standards of God before our children. It is not just that you owe it to your children, you owe it to God. You are significant as mothers. You are not a bystander. Refuse to be a bystander as the devil ravishes our children. The heirs of God, the righteous seed. We must battle for the seed. What does that require of us? And David reminded me that my word is what? Concise? But then we said, you never know what the Holy Spirit is going to tell you. So here it is, unconcising. Because, because I'm going to have to tell you another story. So it says, what do you, what does this require of us? It says, I am saying to you and I, we must establish our personal war room. So here is the story. Many of you know of the, the movie, The War Room. And I, I used to hear Michelle Broadbus saying, we must watch The War Room. And plenty of you saying, we watch The War Room. And I said, not interested. So I didn't go. Anything I hear people jumping up about, I am on the side. But when I was preparing this word, the Holy Spirit says, you've got to watch the war room. And that's where I got this from. And if the war room says, it's where you go, and you, I'm going to tell you the things. The war room is where you meet with our commander in chief. That place in your house, it might be your bedroom, it might be your bathroom, it might be your study like me, it might be your back room, it might be a little corner, but it's that place where you meet with the commander in chief. In, in Joshua, where we get the term from, I'm certain it's in many more, but Joshua chapter 5 says, and I'll just tell you where God presented himself as the commander in chief when he says, um, and it came to pass when Joshua was in Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand and Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, no. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped him. And he said to him, what does the Lord 
said to his servant. Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take up your sand, take off your, take your sandals off your foot for the place where you stand is holy ground. In our war room is where we meet our commander in chief. The war room is the place of strategizing strategizing we do not strategize in our living room with a foot cross that's for relaxation okay so you need to get in that place we must know the possible devices of the enemy and that is what the Lord was saying to me so when I was watching these videos I said daddy may not even want to look on them and things but he said but you need to know what is happening you need to hear what is happening so we must know the possible devices we lock ourselves away as a sign of our focus and determination we are purposeful we give God our full attention you know how you talk to God about your children for me sometimes I don't know what to say I say Ruth and Barrett that's it Lift her up so, a carrier. And I, I never carry Ruth on by herself. I tell Ruth, you tell me the names of your friends. Come here to carry all of them. Me no able, none of them influence me child away from God. So me have to influence their hearts too. So me lean into God for them too. So I bring God, I bring them to you. Give God our full attention. We lock ourselves away such that we can hear the heart of God so that we can pray strategically. Victory does not come by accident. Victory does not come by accident. Do you have a young person you are concerned about? It is good to call Alethea, it is good to call Glenna, it is good to call Shelley, it is good to call and talk about it. But I guarantee you, it is more precious to lean into God. And get that strategy. That strategy. Matthew chapter 6, 5 to 6 says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, you and I, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly openly it doesn't mean people won't hear you praying for years nothing has changed for me I still like to pray in my quiet place I don't like it, you know, I lock my door so David can come in. I just love to pray by myself. When is our prayer time, that's good. But I just love to lock myself away. And God rewards us openly. I encourage you mothers, even if you are doing it, do it for other people, children too. Lock yourself away and go boldly to the throne of grace. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 tells us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. And obtain mercy. I have some that I am having before God. My nieces, my, my nephews, my grand nephew are having them before God. My daughter. We are being called to move beyond wishful thinking. It is beyond a deep sense, beyond a deep sense of desire to see change. You see? So your desire to see the change, what God is saying, go more, go more, go more. It is taking charge and speaking those things that are not as if they were. If it is cool work, it applies. If it is relationship, you know that relationship that you tell them, it's not good for you, darling. I don't see an end in this. They're not listening. All right, done with you. Holy God. 
mash this up in Jesus name tear it down I am telling you I see it work cancel that in the heavenlies cancel it in the heavenlies and when it broke up you say oh my darling what a thing oh my darling oh <laughs> you and them cry together but Vic round the corner you and God say eh 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 we win love is blind it don't always see You see ones that ring up on that young lady, young ladies now, young lady finger. And this little deceiver that come no say, she love the Bible. So every day read the Bible nice. I always say to them, and I, this is not mothers, no young ladies who listening to me online. If in love, read the Bible with you every morning. <laughs> Watch it. Sound spiritual. So many testimonies of deception. Check his heart. Check his language. Check how him deal with your mother. Check how him deal with his girlfriends. There you get your cue. Oh, oh darling, let's have devotions over the phone. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. What am I saying? Don't be caught up by the signs of spirituality. Yes, yeah, so no quiet. That's okay, because you never know, say so it could have happened so. Yes. I have several of those, my mentees. And when they tell me, oh, we had devotions. We had devotions. Six months later. So where's the devotions? It and him gone. That means if the Lord has given you a spirit of discernment as mothers, you have to discern whether devotions good or not. And lean into God and say, stop the hypocrisy. Cut it out. You have a responsibility. You know, I heard a, a, a young man saying, that thing broke my heart. He says, church is about families. Families having children and the next generation coming up and coming up. It means that we have to watch out for the children and our children's children. And that's the blessing. We sing the blessing song upon you and your children and your children's children. It's not okay for them not to follow the Lord. It's not okay. It's, if you have a child that's not following the Lord, it is not okay. So you and I, and if you need help, call me. Me we fight with you. And when me need help, me call too. <laughs> and you fight with me. And then we join in with our husbands. And, and you hear the rough voice take control. And you say, yes, yes, yes. Hey, but listen now. There is strategy for the men. Just like in the army. And the general give the strategy. If you and I don't carry it out, mothers... So we have to pray for them too, you know, for the fathers. So they hear the strategy right. All right. So, so we must be strategic and intent. We are being called to move away from wishful thinking and speak positive. You know, I don't know what happened to this boy. I'm tired to talk to him. It's no good. Ah. Have you looked into the word? Have you seen that he's the blessed of the Lord? He's an overcomer. And you're not feel to say it today, but you're going and you're leaving and you say, God help me. I have to speak positive to this little devil. <laughs> you hear what you said to the little devil? No mistake, make. But by the time you leave out God's presence, him help you if you not call him devil. But to call him man of God called of God overcomer man of his household head of his household willing to take care and then we must engage with the written word because we have to run along spend time in the word of God is only one thing God says he will not return to him void what did he say his word not for you and for me 
That is why I find it very hard to just pray. <laughs> just pray. It's it hard for me now. One time I used to just say, oh God, I lift up Ruth and to you. And I still do that. But I find that when I get very strategic, I have to speak the word. So over in Titus, it talk about forsaking worldly pleasure. And I declare, she shall forsake worldly pleasure and hold on to the things of God. Ah, so we need to know the word. Get to know the word and his will through his word. We must read the word such that we can pray the word of God because it is the word of God that shall not return to him void. It takes faith to overcome and faith cometh by and hearing when Jesus was tested, he spoke one thing only. It is written. What do you know about what's happening in the life of your child, in the life of your niece, in the life of your nephew, in the life of your best friend daughter, your best friend son? Ephesians chapter 6, 12 to 16 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in, of this age. The rulers of darkness against spiritual hosts. As I was reflecting on the things I was hearing and seeing, I was saying to the Lord, before that I was saying, you know this movement of abortion, of of LGBTQ, of non-binary, of all of what we're hearing. I said, nobody just gets up and be. I said, there must be a spiritual force behind this. And when I listened to some more interviews, there it was. There it was. So this is how the Bible describes it. We wrestle against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Therefore, stand having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith which is, with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. That's what chop off the head. And you and I, ladies, have that. Wasn't it us that God, it God said in Genesis, you will, you will, what? Eh. All right. A whim tells so. I think somebody preached it over the, the Easter period, and I sat there, and it's like it dropped again. All we hear is how Eve was deceived. We forget that it was the woman that God said, you will crush the head. Hey! Hey! That is our calling. Crush the head of the enemy. Sometimes when you crush the head, it's sweet, you see? You say, yes, 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 yes. In this little situation. Another time, him kick you down and you say, press hard, pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Hey, hey! Anyone him come with, we have a scripture. Hey! Woo! No, I'm enjoying myself too much. We will go on till 12. So, so we take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit and the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful, watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We cannot be ordinary in our prayer. The scripture points out that it is a wrestle, it is a fight, but it is not a fight against flesh and blood, my brothers and sisters. The prince of the world seeks to deceive our children. I remember right here, our brother Newton Gabidon, I don't know if you remember, it was a, Bible week. 
Man praying for years. That man deposits so much in me. Every fire me know about prayer. I him, he instrumented it in there. And Sister Alicia and I would be there every Monday evening and teaching us to war. And the devil could not get him. Him, him take over the, the man daughter. Till the child of God get up and kick his mother, our mother, in the belly. And it's and it's when God carry him downstairs and say, take her out of the hands of the enemy. You, he had to fight for her. But then they never stopped right there. They gave us the victory story of how they it overcame. Prayer works. Sometime it takes so long. And you, if you might get where I get, you just stop pray. And then God sends somebody and just water it again. Water me again. What am I saying right there? It will not always be easy. But we still have to lean on. We still have to lean. So I repeat this. The prince of the world seeks to deceive our children. To kill the purpose of God for their lives. To blight their destinies. We cannot withstand him in our motherly pleas. We cannot withstand him in our motherly priesthood role using earthly weapons. Sit and negotiate, that has its place. But we have got to see it as a spiritual battle that requires spiritual tools. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 6 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not of flesh, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You hear that? When your obedience is fulfilled. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to interpret that for us a little more. So this is our task. And we must be watchful. We must persevere. And then we must speak into the lives of our children. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. The Holy Spirit just reminded me of, was it, who is it, Esau? The one who had the children and never corrected them? What is it? The priest? Eli? Eli, Esau. How it become Esau? Hey, Eli. He just reminded me of that. You know, sometimes we love them to death. Oh gee. Oh gee. Oh Ruthie is so pretty. I cannot. Make sure you go on in the mini mini. Oh, our legs are sweet. <laughs> lie, 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 lie. Watch over it, watch over it. So you just drop that in there. It's nowhere in my notes. So we are to be careful also to, be the, to obey the instructions of the commander in chief. So here is the controversial first line. It does not always end with prayer and the written word. And some of you might say, what? So let's finish the whole sentence. It does not always end with prayer and the written word because often when we go in prayer to God, he will give you instructions, the rhema word, as part of the strategy. These can be simple to great things. Simple, as one friend of mine would say, by the time she had three boys or four, and she said, oh, them no want her praise. So she no bother with that. Holy Spirit, just, uh, she just go in in the night while them sleeping. She anoint them, and she pray them, <laughs> and she send them off. So they feel okay, but she, her job is done. She has already done her prayer. So it does not always end there. God will give you a strategy and you must be careful to follow those instructions because in them lie the victory. So let's wrap it up. Our children depend on us and more importantly, God depends on us. He requires it of us to refuse to be ordinary, 
to refuse to retreat to a position of fear and worry like I was getting to. To, to, to fight in the natural, he's saying we are to refuse to do that. Rather, as priests unto God, let us take up our armor and fight. Resist the devil and he will? Amen. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. It therefore means, you know, say, talk it today and it's seek done tomorrow. If that was the case, you don't need diligence. Diligence means we have to push, push, don't give up. And again, 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says, He who calls you and I is faithful, who also will do it. Our God, who sees us in the war room, will reward us openly, and our children will rise up to call us blessed. The Lord bless you on your journey.